So I want to talk about Bellingcat. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Bellingcat. It's another. I I, I view I view this thing as like a hipster newspaper, right? Like similar to Vice was kind of like this hipster. Like look at I'm all I'm so edgy. I'm gonna say fuck in my article. Just got you guys see that I said fuck in my art. I, that's because the author of this article fucks. So the author of this article gets to say fuck because we're vice. Like it's, I look at Bell and Cat as, as one of those kind of newspapers, right? They're, they're very like bro -y and aggro and shit. <laughs> but, um, there's a, a great Mint Press news article. It's a, it's a little old uh, of a Mint Press news article, but it's been something that I've, I've wanted to talk about for a while. Um, because I, you know, people, people, apparently people like Bellingcat and, and, you know, with corporate media being what it is, it needs some fresh, cool faces and Bellingcat kind of being in that, uh, genre of like cool hipster media of like, yeah, we wear suits, but I do my tie a little bit. And yeah, my suit jacket doesn't match my pants. What? You know, like that kind of. That's the that's all I hear. And anytime like I look I, I don't particularly pay attention to exactly all the shit that Bell and Cat puts out. Uh, nor do I pay attention to everything that like corporate media puts out. I, I will I will pay attention to it every every so often just to see uh, what what they're saying and, and what the, the corporate narrative is or, or or really what the intelligence community's narrative is. Um so I know how to debunk it i know how to form my counter arguments right uh you got to know what the enemy is saying what the enemy is up to it's is that sun tzu's art of war i kind of feel like that's sun tzu's art of war um but you know that's that's the, the direction that i'm uh that i'm taking so i do pay attention to those things i read i read conservative shit too just so i know what conservatives are are uh, are being fed so i know like when i meet my conservative friends and they go oh you want to defund the police huh well get ready to be butt fucked and robbed all the time because that's what's going to happen in a non-police state america and it's just like what are you taught you know i need to know what what to argue like where where the points that i'm going to argue are uh but this article uh from uh Mint Press News, Alan McCloyd wrote the article, uh, great, great author, Alan McCloyd. Uh, he wrote about how Bellingcat is basically funneling um, former intelligence agency operate, operators, former intelligence agents, I guess would be called, they would be called. Uh, they're funneling them into corporate mainstream media, which means that corporate mainstream media is getting the narrative of, um, you know, uh, the intelligence community. So, so basically it's this, it's this pathway to, uh, just a news organization run by the CIA. <laughs> that's, that's what corporate media is becoming. And Bellingcat is helping them do that. Right. So he talks about a bunch of this stuff, like, and he debunks a lot of shit because he debunks a lot of the, the, the sort of, uh, media excitement around Bellingcat. And he talks about that. He, that's, that's how he opens the article, you know, uh, and he talks about Elliot Higgins, who is who is the quote citizen journalist and founder of uh, of Bellingcat, and uh, at the Huffington Post wrote this fluff piece about him, uh, about how he saw what was going on in Syria, and saw you know how Assad was uh, was gassing his own people. Oh my God! It's not like the United States doesn't do that all the time with tear gas, which is banned by the Geneva Conventions, but we use that on protesters all the time, and no one has waged a war against us. But yeah, no, Elliot Higgins was like, "But th this guy in a vaguely brown country is gassing his own people." Probably, maybe I don't know. Well, I should sit on my couch and and look up some articles written by some CIA spooks. And then and then summarize them, but in my own words. So so basically basically he's he wrote a book report for the CIA on a blog. And that became Bellingcat. <laughs> <laughs> but kind of, I mean, that's basically what he did. He sat on his couch and and Huffington Post is going on and on about how great he is that he was on his couch and he and he solved the, the whole crisis in Syria and how Assad is this awful person that fucking, you know, uh, gasses his own people and destroyed the country 
uh you know like what like you didn't go there and they and then they claim themselves to be investigative journalists that's the other big thing right so they're citizen journalists they claim that they're citizen journalists they're just average you know run of the mill dudes right elliot higgins is this schlubby kind of dude he doesn't even own a fedora he's never even seen a fedora it's top hats or nothing for elliot higgins but they claim that he's an investigative journalist. Well, how can you be an investigative journalist without going to the place that you're trying to investigate? I don't claim to be an investigative journalist because I'm not. What I do is commentary uh, on the news, on the, on, on the topics that uh, you know uh, corporate media won't cover. I, I do not claim to be an investigative journalist because I am not. I can kind of put some pieces together. You, you know, like that's I, I use critical thinking skills and humor. And that's like I'm not going out there being like as an investigative journalist, comedian, citizen activist. That would that would be insane. Everybody would be like, what are you talking about? You know, uh, Fiorella Isabel from the Convo Couch. She's over. She's in Peru right now covering the election of what's going on down there. You know, to see if there's anything fraudulent going on, seeing there, if there's any sort of backdoor ele election manipulation going on. That's an investigative journalist. Greg Palace went down to Georgia and discovered that there was some foul play in Georgia that knocked a bunch of black voters off the rolls. That's an investigative journalist right there. But this dude sat on a couch, ate some cheesy puffs, drank a little soda, fucking summarized the CIA report, added his own embellishments, and it was like, citizen investigative journalist. I made a business card that says that. I made a business card that said czar of America, but that doesn't make me a czar of fucking shit. So just by that alone, I think we can disprove the fact that the Bellingcat has nothing to do with investigative journalism. But he's also not a citizen journalist, right? Because... A citizen journalist w would be someone like Fiorella, someone like Greg Palace. That's like, okay, I'm taking it upon myself to go dig around, to, to go do the investigation and to learn the truth and, and relay it to the people. That's really, that's also what a fucking journalist does. So like pretty much every journalist that exists in America is a fucking citizen journalist. This dude is, is not even close because uh, between 2016 and 2019, he was a senior executive for the Atlantic Council, which has connections to NATO and was was telling Facebook like what they should shadow ban and what they should censor on their platform. They controlled what people got to see on Facebook. Right. That's that's the Atlantic Council. And he was part of that between 2016 and 2019. Right. And those were around the time that Facebook was doing narrative control around the time that the Atlantic council was in cahoots with Facebook was when he was a senior executive of the Atlantic council. When Facebook deleted 800 b both left and right independent news media sites with no warning, with no flags, with no whatever. Elliot Higgins was part of that. The guy that created Pell and Cat was part of 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 a fucking think tank partnered with Facebook to get rid of 800 independent news organizations without warning. And then all of a sudden he comes up with his own, quote, independent media organization that parrots the narratives of the intelligence community. So Atlantic Council also, um, its board of directors included Henry Kissinger, Condi Rice, Colin Powell, and seven former CIA directors. I mean, how can we... How, th this guy didn't come out and, and blow the whistle on the Atlantic Council... To be like, hey, here's some shady shit I saw at the Atlantic Council. By the way, I'm launching an independent news organization. It, 
No, he just came out of the Atlantic Council and created this news organization. And the first thing he did is talk about Syria and parrot CIA narratives for, from Syria, State Department narratives from Syria, and then has basically continued that trend going forward. You're not independent. You're, you, are, you are the propaganda paper for the intelligence community. He has experience in narrative control. He works with warmongers in the intelligence agencies. So that's why in their paper, Bellingcat uh, very boldly said that we need to overthrow Nicolas Maduro in Venezuela, who was legally elected in an election uh, that election observers said was better than America's, including Jimmy Carter. And when they were like, well, what do you think of uh, American elections? And they were like, let us let me show you a photo of what we think of American elections. And it was just a dumpster on fire because that's what American elections are. They're dumpster fires. But it doesn't stop there. Uh he was uh, he's funded well, one of his one of his donors is is Nicholas is Maduro's opposition or one of Maduro's oppositions uh Thor Halverson which is a, which is like a very badass name for an awful awful person uh who who is advocating for the illegal overthrowing of a legally elected leader of a sovereign country because we don't like their politics because they're socialists and they take care of their people better than America does. Even even with economic sanctions, Nicolas Maduro was was feeding his people and giving them UBI and making sure that nobody would like be destitute and homeless in his country. Even with American sanctions, he was able to do that. Could you imagine how much he could have done without without American sanctions? They also got money from the fake humanitarian organization, the National Endowment for Democracy, which has nothing to do with democracy because it's basically a front for the CIA to run their coups. They're the organization that comes out and goes, oh, oh, oh. The torment that these socialist governments put on their people, and really the, the torment is coming from economic sanctions imposed by capitalist America. And then they go, well, this guy is the real leader. And then everybody goes, who the fuck is this guy? And they're like, this is the guy we found. And he's going to do everything we tell him to. But he's the real leader of Venezuela. Or insert Latin American country name here. Yeah, but they're funded. Oh, yeah, but they're independent, right? They're independent news organization. Independent news organizations don't get money from think tanks or the intelligence community or from war profiteers. Who also fund Bellingcat? <laughs> independent news or like this. This is an independent. I would say this is probably an independent news organization, even though it's it's just me. Uh, and I am f funded by people, by like average regular viewers. That's that's who funds this shit. It's not. I'm not getting funded by the fucking National Endowment for Democracy. <laughs> It'd be weird if I was. It honestly would be weird if I was. Uh, but Bellingcat has a bunch of journalists that start in the intelligence community. They leave, they join Bellingcat, and then they do such a, quote, good job. Uh, they move on to other organizations, right? There's been a bunch of them that moved on to the Washington Post, New York Times, BBC, NPR. You know, it's just like the, 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 the laundry list of fucking corporate media organizations that's where they go to and that becomes narrative control because then they can lock in you know it's it, like it, it it would be crazy if somebody worked for the cia or the nsa or the fbi or the state department or the pentagon or whatever for 20 some odd years retired from there and didn't keep in touch with anybody at all and wasn't on the pulse of what's going on in their industry. Like even when you, even if I was like, if, if I if I had a full fledged career in graphic design, and I retired, I would still keep up with what's going on in graphic design. It's just like that's that's also just basic psychology. That's just what you've known for so long. That's been a part of your life. You know, that's 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 been one third of your day every day for twenty years. 
supposedly, ten, you know, ten. And then all of a sudden you retire and you're not going to con- like you're I mean, I'm sure you take a month off or whatever, but I'm pretty sure you'll come right back to it. So one of these people I got to I, I wanted to kind of highlight uh, was was somebody named Giancarlo Fiorella. He ran an opposition blog called In Venezuela from Canada. Uh, and then basically praised a domestic terrorist in Venezuela and said that he's a hero, right? And then all corporate media was parroting the same thing. This guy like blew up a uh, government building and, you know, probably hurt a bunch of people. And this guy, and, and Giancarlo Fiorella was calling him like a hero and shit like that. He now works for BBC. Right. Like this guy has ties to anti Venezuela and opposition. And now he works for the BBC, which means that the BBC narrative is also going to be anti Nicolas Maduro. And BBC is going to fall in line with what the CIA says or what the NSA says. Right. And this is a, this is, a, this is a, a, a government run, a state run news organization in a different country that has hired a former intelligence agent from I guess Canada. So maybe it won't be the United States intelligence agency, but Canadian intelligence agency, which I assume exists and probably has very similar thoughts and ideas as the American CIA. <laughs> but they were, they were, you know, this, this hipster journalism is going to be used to pacify the American populace to be okay with more war, right? That's why that's why the 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 narrative uh, around Syria is that Assad is an awful person that gassed his own people, even though that's been debunked several different times by journalists like Vanessa Bealy, Eva Bartlett, Aaron Mate. Like so Bell and Cat just just kind of funnels those people into that. Everything about Bell and Cat is uh, kind of. It, it, it is a fuck you to what real journalism is. Everything about Bell and Cat is that, right? Um, even their logo, their their logo is an upside down question mark, right? So like, if you used the question mark as your logo, like let's, I, I have a background in design, right? So like, if you used that, a stylized cool looking fucking question mark and that was your logo it's not even a style it's like a fucking basic typewriter font question mark and that's what they use as their logo it's it's very it's not great um from a design perspective i think the concept is interesting but i mean you could have but that's the point right like if you're if you are a if you are a news organization if you're a journalism company um that parrot state department narratives cia narratives all that sort of stuff you want something to look like it's a government thing but you also need it to look cool fun and hip so you flip the question oh it's an upside down why upside down question mark oh you crazy what the fuck you know like it gives you that impression of like these people are off the chain they're so dead. They flipped a question mark upside. Can you believe it? Like it said, bullshit hipster thing of like, we're going to be subversive, but you know, our subversive is turning punctuation on its head, literally. But it's signaling that they don't actually care about critical thinking or the big question. They flipped it upside down. They they perverted it. They, they, they flipped it on its axis. If it was a cool stylized question mark, that would be interesting because that still signals that we are asking the big questions. We are critical thinkers, but they did this upside down thing to be like, yeah, no, we're, we're flipping critical thinking on its head, which means that we're not doing critical thinking. We're just parroting what the state department wants us to say, because fuck questions and fuck uh, thinking critically and fuck uh, questioning authority. Also, it's going to be the most boring font that you've ever seen in your life. Just basic typewriter shit. Nothing stylized, nothing cool, nothing to kind of, even if it's like, harken, even if it was a question mark that harkened back to the days of 
old school journalism, that would be something. Bellingcat is the opposite of the uh, comic book character named Question, ironically. Um, he was, uh, he's basically a superhero that's an investigative journalist, right? Like his, 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 he wears a mask, but the mask is just like a blank face. Um, he can see through it and, and stuff, but in order to get the mask off, he needs like a special spray that essentially disintegrates it because it's supposed to look like, like skin. I think he's kind of, he's, he's a little, he's a little crazy, um, but he doesn't trust authority. And, you know, a lot of, the the way they frame him in the comic books is 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 sort of like a conspiracy theorist that ends up being right. So so essentially, he's an investigative journalist. He's got above average IQ. Um, he's got some gadgets and stuff, uh, and uh, he's worked with the Justice League. He's worked with the Suicide Squad. But and then in the animated series, if you're if you're a fan of the Justice League animated series, he was featured in that cartoon. I, I, actually, he's one of the he's one of like his investigation is like a key plot point in 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 the show um and he's voiced by the delightful and wonderful jeffrey combs if you're a star trek nerd like i am uh jeffrey combs is is wayun from uh ds9 and he plays uh brunt uh also on ds9 he's just fantastic just a just an overall fantastic actor that doesn't get enough credit um and he's done like a lot of voice acting but he plays the question and Bellingcat is essentially the opposite of that in every which in every which way in every which way, right? The question is an investigative journalist. He's a critical thinker, right? He doesn't trust authority. He doesn't trust the official narratives that come out. He he wears a trench coat uh, and a fedora. Nobody in Bellingcat has even heard of a fedora. Their logo is an upside down question. Like they are the anti, they are anti everything this fucking character stands for. <laughs> Let me look at some comments. Over on the rock fans, Holly joined the stream. Good to see you, Holly. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Holly calls it the the web of deception. It's all about the narrative. Uh, follow the money and and uh, NED is ev net is everywhere. Yeah, uh, the uh, Washington Post has a CIA contract. They do. Yeah, actually, because um, what's his fucking face? Jeff Bezos has CIA contracts. Uh, so it would be very fishy if he wasn't parroting the CIA narrative as well. You know, so uh, yeah, they they definitely have CIA contracts. And and I mean, you know, again, if you kind of read what Washington Post has to say, you don't. For, for somebody that was trying to empower the working class as Bernie Sanders was, uh, in 2016, you don't write 16 articles in the course of one day trying to shit on the dude if you don't have objectives from the CIA and the State Department that want to keep the working class divided and impoverished. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the like button and please make sure you share this content out. Sharing is very important. Sharing is how independent media gets the word out there about topics that corporate media doesn't even want to mention on their networks. So it's really up to you guys. Corporate media very much depends on the people. We are people powered media. That's what we really are. Uh, another great way to help if you're on stable financial ground is to uh, make a financial contribution to this channel. And you can do so over at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. You can become a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets, early access to videos, bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content, uh, a way for you to communicate directly with me, ask me questions, and other uh, premium content that uh, will be released on a monthly basis. Um, or you can make a one-time donation as well on that same website. Um, I also have uh, various stand-up comedy albums. I have about six comedy albums out right now uh, that are available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. And most of them, if you get them off of Bandcamp, are available for a dollar or a, a pay-what-you-want pricing. And I also want to mention that I do have an online merch store. Uh, you can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com, click on the merch tab, and check out all of the designs that I've made myself. 
And the Julian Assange shirt, there is a Julian Assange shirt that's on the website. All the profit from the Julian Assange designs will be going to uh, pro-Assange activists, such as Action for Assange, uh, Kevin Gostola, Richard Methurst, folks uh, 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 that, that are covering and talking about Assange. So I'm going to be making donations to them. Um, uh, it'll be 100% of the profits I make off of that shirt. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. Thank you again to all the people that have made contributions to the show, that regularly check out my content, that have subscribed to my channels. I, I very, very much appreciate it, and uh, and you guys help keep this uh, keep keep this this train a moving. So I, I very much appreciate that. Until the next video, we'll see you on the road. See you guys.